so very much for me. She will forgive me all my sins. There is a holy ghost in me. I love the man. Oh, golly, oh, golly. I love the man, the man, the man. Oh, golly. She has done so very much for me. Forgive me all my sins, there's a holy ghost in me. I love the man of Galilee. His name is Jesus, yes, the Son of God. I love him, I love him, I love him. He has done so very much for, very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins, there's a holy ghost in me. I love the man, the man, the man. Very much for me. Yeah, yes, forgive me of my sin. And there's a Holy Ghost in me. I love the man of Galilee. What did I say? His name is Jesus, the Son of God. I love him, I love him, I love him. He has done so very much for me. Very much for me. I don't know about you. He has forgiven me of my sin. In verse the Holy Ghost in me. I love the man, the man, the man of Galilee. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord with one more song. Then we go to the Bible study today. It's the Divine of Christ, Nation Child Bible Study, where Reverend Dr. Joy, the G.O., the, the one that is speaking today, and that, well, let's go to the Bible. That's what we do in the Divine of Christ, give you the Word of God raw from the Bible, because the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. Come on, come on, let's get the song. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. They're trying to put the song on so that we can go on into our Bible. <laughs> Abo to to di nono, obi amule kanja buya, ezeke zenale kenem, ebi mere kanje do. Songs of praises in my mouth, I will fill them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises. Songs of praises in my mouth, I will sing them with all joy. Sing of King, I serve my praises. I still love the Lord today. Follow my God. We worship Him. The reverence in the midst. Strength and mind are your words. We worship Him. Never let them be. Sing love praises in my mouth. I always sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises as you guard the light to live. Songs of praises in my mouth, I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises as you grant me life to live.
Ethiopia mole kanja boya ezekeze na lekenem ebi mere kanjo abo tuto de nonu ebi mole kanja boya ezekeze na lekenem ebi mere kanjo songs of praises in my mouth I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I sing my praises as you grant me life to live. Some soft praises in my mouth. I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I sing my praises as you grant me life to live. God bless you as you join. <clears throat> we sang our song. We worship the Lord. We praise Him because every time we come into the presence of the Lord, my heart is gladdened, double excited that we are awake this morning one more time to dig in deep into the Word of God to know what the Bible is telling us. Because that is the only thing that can lead us in this sinful world that we are. So please, as you are joining, don't forget to like, comment, and share. The sharing is you are evangelizing the word of God according to what Jesus tells us to go. So go make disciples. We are all here to make disciples, my brothers and sisters. So just keep on sharing and sharing and consult, invite all your friends. Because I know, I was telling somebody, I said, it's so amazing how... Fake news and uh, naked people and uh, worldly things goes viral on, online. But when you preach the word of God, the authentic word of God, it doesn't go anywhere. Unfortunately, and the, and the devil just use uh, the same people that call themselves Christians uh, and believers to, to push those fake things and fake uh, 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 things of this world. And when it comes to the word of God, we just look at it and just stand. So my brothers and sisters, let us not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Let us not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Let us know how to push the word of God. If somebody said, don't send to me again, you know you've done your part. You become that one. God said, if you get to a home and you knock at the door, they didn't open the door, you dust your shoes. But if you go to a home, they open the door. It says, peace be unto this home. So if you are welcome and as you come, please just keep on sharing and commenting. God bless you as you, are, as you join and when you come in, comment so that we can see you because sometimes I will not see you. You are welcome in Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp, everywhere, all over. Please keep on pushing this word by sharing. Because the most thing God calls us to do in this world is evangelism. God has called us to evangelize. We have to evangelize. We have to evangelize. These videos that is so much in our YouTube, the Evangelists of Christ YouTube, Facebook, is just there. But a lot of things and uh, people send to me sometimes, I just look at it and said, if fake news and worldly things can move like this and go viral, why don't the word of God? It depends on me and you. We are the cause of all this. So let's push the word of God, like aggressively push the word of God and do what Jesus tells us to do. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in me that helps us, helps me to remind me that I am your child. To remind everyone online that we are your child. Please help us, uh, help me to always remember that the Holy Spirit is your sealed, that I belong to Him and His deposit, the guaranteed that He will do what He has promised to do in my life. He has promised to do in everybody's life online, watching and about to watch, listening and about to listen. Thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to be my comforter and be the comforter of everybody online, oh God. And like a down payment, a debt deposit or validating signature on the contract of for my life and for everybody on life for my family my because the presence of the holy spirit in me demonstrate the genuineness of my faith proves that i am your child and secures eternal life for me and so to everybody online that are listening please let the power of the holy spirit work in me to transform me now and revive me to experience your great supernatural 
power in this world to do your exploits in your name in Jesus Christ and to everyone online at the same prayer I pray to them and same shall it be so that they will they, they, they will have that power to do exploit like we're saying power to share power to evangelize your world because that's what you call us to do so after all said and done you come to we come to help me say welcome my faithful servant the spirit of God in the spirit of God's name amen God bless you all today our first topic that we're going to deal with is Rahab. Last um, two Tuesdays, uh, I talked about uh, Joshua. And I brought Joshua to you and uh, and put him in front of all of us. And uh, I tried to introduce Joshua to all of you. But today, my brothers and sisters, uh, I brought a woman who's supposed to, uh, according to the world, we're not supposed to even talk about her. Because uh, the first thing they know about Rahab, if you have read the Bible, is that Rahab is a prostitute. So because it's a prostitute, according to the world, the way the world will, will, will level us uh, when you do stuff like that, a prostitute, a thief, a homosexual, this, a murderer, that is what the world label you. But you know one thing I thank God is that anybody can label you, but God have a something, God created you, so you know there's something in you that he can use. And Rehab is one of them. Let's go and see Miss Rehab. And I will start my Rehab. I'm going to introduce Rehab to you. And I said, Rehab, good morning. And Rehab is answering me, good morning, Reverend. I say, how are you today? He said, I'm fine. And I pray I bring Rehab today on Bible study of the Vassalers of Christ. Rehab was a prostitute in the city of Jericho. As a prostitute, she lived on the edge of the society. One stop short uh, of rejection. You know, when you're a prostitute, when you do stop, people reject you. He was rejected, rejected, uh, rejection, uh, um, a stop short of rejection. Her house built right into the city wall provided both lodging, lodging and favors to travelers. It was a natural place. For the Israelite spies to stay, as they will be mistaken uh, for Rehab's customers. Stories about the Israelites had been circulating for some time, but now it was evident that the Israelites were about to invade Jericho. Living on the wall, Rehab felt especially vulnerable, yet while she shared the general mood of fear with the rest of Jericho's population, she alone turned to the Lord for her salvation. Sometimes we find ourselves in certain places we didn't plan for. You know, things happen we didn't plan for. Rehab is one of them. But in the midst of her prostitution, she alone turned to God for salvation. Her faith gave her the courage to hide the spies and lie to the authorities. Rehab knew her position was dangerous. She could have been killed for doing this if she were caught harboring the Israelites. But Rehab took the risk when you serve God. I tell people, I'd rather took a risk with God than take a risk with anyone in this world. Rehab took a risk, however, because she sensed that the Israelites relied on a God worth trusting. Don't take a risk for anybody that is not worth trusting, my brothers and sisters. Anytime you're going to take a risk, remember this teaching. Do not ever take a risk for anyone that is not worthy of trusting. So Rahab took a risk, however, because he sensed that the God, the God of Israel, Israelites, that he's taking a risk for was worth trusting. And God rewarded Rahab by promising safety for her and her family. And God walks through people like Rahab, even today in our world, whom we incline to reject. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says in Psalms that the rejected stone have become the head of the house. The black sheep of the house have become the head of the house. Right? You see some people, you just people, the way they dress, the way they look, the job they're doing, the things they're doing, you just uh, uh, commonize them. I was talking to my husband this early morning. We we're talking about how people just, just look at your position because they know you very well. They're like, oh, excuse me. 
They disrespect your position. They disrespect your personality. They disrespect your ability. They disrespect the gift and talent that God gave to you. But I tell you, I, got, I have a God who, when women beings are disrespecting and rejecting your ability, God will send someone who saw your ability. God will saw someone who know your ability. God will send someone who will love you for who you are. That's exactly what God did for Rahab here. In the midst of Rahab being rejected and her faith gave her the courage to hide the spy's authority. Rahab, Rahab knew her position was dangerous but she still did what he has to do. And God rewarded Rahab by promising safety for her and the family. Rahab with risk he took, he saved his family. God works through people like Rahab whom we are inclined to reject. God remembers her because of her faith. I tell you, our God is a God of faith. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you are doing now. Even if you are prostituting now. Even if you, if you are a murderer. But one thing about God is that God knows your heart. God knows why you join it. But you can turn to God for salvation like Rahab did. Rahab, whom we incline to reject, God remembers her because of her faith. Not her profession. Uh -uh, God don't care about your profession. If at times you feel like failure, you feel like you are no more, nobody. You feel like no, you know people look down on you. People have rejected you. People have called you stupid. You cannot watch anything. Remember the story of Rahab. Rahab rose above her situation through her trust in the God. In, the, in God that we trust, through her trust in the Lord, through her trust in God Almighty, through her trust in God who sees the heart. I tell people when you see anybody on the street, you see these homosexuals, you see these liars, you see this gossip, this prostitute. Think about, put yourself in their shoe. Ask one question: What leads them to this road? You see people say, oh, somebody killed this person, someone. Ask what, if you start asking that question, God will give you the wisdom and knowledge to understand that all human beings were all created in one image, but Satan just used some people and we can then help such people. Rahab rose above her situation through her trust in the Lord. You can do the same, my brothers and sisters. Rahab strengths and accomplishments, uh, com uh, accompl what he accomplished in life. The relative of Rahab is Boaz. If you read the Bible, Boaz was in the history of Jesus Christ. Rahab the prostitute was in the history of Jesus Christ. Relative of Boaz and Doors and ancestors of David and Jesus. One of only one, two women listed in the hall of faith in Hebrews 11, resourceful, willing to help others at a great cost to herself. You check Hebrews 11, they talk about all men that have faith, they start with Abraham, they go ahead. Rahab was one of the two ladies they mentioned their name after Sarah. The weakness of Rahab and this mistake was she was a prostitute. Everybody in this world have their weaknesses and their mistakes. Lesson we should learn from Rahab life, she did not let fear affect her faith. I know that's right. In God's ability to deliver. Say that again. And that would take me to where I would have the topic. The, everything about Rahab, the statistics happened in Jericho. Occupation of Rahab was a prostitute, inner keeper, let become, later become a wife. The relative of uh, Rahab was a sister of David and Jesus, and you can check that in Matthew chapter 1 5. Contemporary was Joshua. The key verse you, uh, Rahab was mentioned by faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Hebrew 11 31. Rahab's story is told in Joshua 2. Joshua 6, 22, Joshua 23. She's also mentioned in Matthew 1, 5, Hebrews 11, 31, and James 2, 25. And this will take me, we now talk about jo uh, Rahab. So when you leave this Bible study today, you can talk something about Rahab. Today, our topic, we're going to chapter 4. Our topic, chapter 4, we say, do not let fear. And I want someone to type it down, please. Do not let fear affect your faith in God's ability to deliver. Amen, somebody. 
Don't let the fear of your life, the fear of unknown, the fear of people rejection, people disappointment, the fear of failure, affect your faith in God's ability to deliver. That's the topic today. Do not let fear affect your faith in God's ability to deliver. Let's run. We started late, but we're going to get it here. After the people safely cross the river, what will be next? Conquering the land of, conquering the land? Not yet. First, God directed them to build a memorial from 12 stones drawn from the river by 12 men, one from each tribe. This may seem like an insignificant step in their mission of conquering the land, but God did not want his people to plunge into their taxes unprepared. God will always want us to get prepared. They were to focus on him, Remember who was guiding them as you are busy doing your God giving tasks, my brothers and sisters. Set aside quiet moment, times to build your own memorial to God's power. Too much activity may shift your focus away from God. Don't let too much activity shift your focus away from God. Let's read uh, chapter 14. That day the Lord exhausted Joshua in the sight of all Israel. Uh, they revered him on all the days of his life, just as they, they had revel, reverend Moses. The Israelites reverend Joshua for his role in leading them across the Jordan River. He, like Moses, uh, he, like Moses, will receive Israel's praise generation after generation. Although Israel was not a world power at that time, Joshua's reputation for handling his responsibilities uh, God's way brought him greater glory than if he had been a hero in a superpower nation. Doing right is more than important than doing well. Say that again. Doing right, my brothers and sisters, is more important than doing well. And the, the Joshua did well. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. Verse 21 to 24. We are in Bible study, so calm down. We're going to read the Bible. He said to the Israelites, In the future, when your descendants ask their fathers, who do, What do these stones mean? Tell them Israel crossed the Jordan on a dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did did. did the Lord your God did to the Jordan just what he did he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. The memorial of the 12 stones was to be constant reminder, one thing I like about God, Whatever God do for you, that's why he said he's a jealous God. He said it or he described himself as a jealous God. And there's so many present. So somebody cannot be jealous if he's not present. You got to understand that. For someone to be jealous, for you to be, uh, like, like husband and wife, for you to be jealous of your spouse, you got to be present and do your job and do your duties and do your love and whatever. If you don't do what you're supposed to do as a wife or husband, what are you jealous of? Somebody got to help you one way or the other. God punished the devil in the pit of hell, but that was that was a writing. So you got to do your job for someone to, for you to be able to say, "Oh, I'm jealous of." God, God is so much presence with us. So every time He do something for us, He want to stay right there to remind you. So if you're ungrateful, He will remind you. I remind you until you be grateful to say thank you. So in this case, in the Joshua chapter four twenty one twenty four, the memorial of the twelve stones was to be. The constant reminder of the day the Israelites crossed the river Jordan on a dry ground. They can tell their children, 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 children. Their children will see the stones, hear the story, like we're hearing the story now, like we're sharing the story now, and learn about God. When you know that, oh, God, the same God dried the Red Sea and they cross on the dry land. Now the same God crossed the river Jordan. My dear, if you don't praise that God, if you don't turn your life around and come to that God, then something is wrong with you and we got to pray for you for deliverance. Do you have traditions, special dates, 
or special places to help your children learn about God's work in your life? Good question to parents. Do you take time to tell them, tell your children, tell your family what God has done for you? Forgiving and saving you, answering your prayers, supplying all your needs according to his riches and glory. Retelling your story will help keep memories of God's faithfulness alive in your family, alive in your midst of your friends, alive in everywhere you go. Keep on telling people about God, what God has done. Uh, now we, let's go to chapter 5, now verse 1. Now when all the Amoritans kings were uh, west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast had how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until, until we had crossed over, their hearts met and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites in fight. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, why do God always say we should testify and testify and tell about this miracle? Because the more you tell about what God has done for you, the more the enemies will say, huh? Excuse me? Enemy might be wrong, ready to fight you, to do everything, to take your job, to take your finance, to take your children, to take your marriage, to take your life, to take anything. But when you keep on testifying, the same agent of enemy will go back to tell and say, don't go down. Hmm. That person, <laughs> the God in that person, <laughs> that God on the play. Do you see what God has done for him? Do you see what God has done for her? That's why I like that song. Come and see, oh, come and see. Come and see, oh, come and see, come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Bianule, oh, bianule. We're singing out. He said, come and see what the Lord has done. The more you are testifying and showing the word that God got you, the devil will tear, raise, and run. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's not that he's, he's, he's not going to come. He will come, remember? He tempted Jesus. But according to the Bible, he tempted him one, two, three, and he said he left for a season. So the more you are testifying about the Lord, this miracle, the testimony, everything God is doing for you, the more the devil will go with his agent and group for a season. And by the time he comes back to re renew himself, you have already rekindled by your miracle, the testimony of God. So the Amoritan and the Canaanites were the two major group, groups living in Canaan at the time of Israelite invasion. The Canaanites worship a variety of gods. Mm -hmm. But Baal was their favorite god, that small god, I'm talking about the small g. Canaanite culture was materialistic and their religion sexually, uh, and their religion sexual, the, the, the Israelites uh, continually turned to Baal after entering Canaan, which God told them not to do. The modern god also affected Israelites' worship and turned people away from the worshipping the true god who brought them. And that's what we do, ungrateful generation like he call us. Worshipping these false gods eventually brought about Israel's downfall. I was telling me and my husband was talking this morning and I was telling my husband I said anytime we're talking about this uh, you know this choma issue of uh, this uh, the, the dead of choma and uh, the dead of this uh, choma killing a man uh, the, 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 the sugar daddy and all these things and I was I was saying to him I said anytime a male or female anytime a man or woman anytime a husband or wife you don't need to open the door for Satan Woman beings in general, you don't need to open the door for Satan. All you need is a crack, a little crack like this, like this. And Satan will just push the door open. That's what it is. That crack is sin. Any type of sin, S-I-N. And you see that little young girl talking about sex as if it's nothing. We have sex, we drug, we drink. Come on. What, what world are we living again, my brothers and sisters? What world? Even as grown up as I am, you those things called SES, we don't even mention it. Hey, you don't you don't even say it because it's like it's an abomination to even mention it. 
and you are all over on social media. I stab him. I do this. God punish the devil in the pit of hell. God will not go into our children. God will not. The Satan will not go into our children. Satan will not use us. Use our children or use us as he used that girl. Satan will not possess us to do whatever Chidima or whatever they call her name or the so-called man he killed. God will not let our husband, our fathers, our sons, our brothers to go into there now. My question to all this interview and all these useless videos that, that are going viral because that's all it is instead of the word of God going viral. Who is going to talk for the dead man? Are we talking about the dead man? Who is going to talk for him? Now he has thrown his life away. For what? Worldly pleasure. Sex. Drink. Drug. Drink. Sex. Drink. Drug. I told my sons, I said, listen to me, my children. The only three things that will kill a man is women, which is sex, money, and alcohol, drugs. Anything that you put in your body will kill you. So be careful. And I added one yesterday, friendship. If your friends does not kill you, those people you trust so much does not hurt you or kill you, your life will be a better place. It wasn't a bad thing when, when, when we are growing up, going to school, they say a friend indeed is a friend in need. They don't speak those English no more. Say that again, Reverend, because even the little children born now don't know that meaning. A friend indeed is a friend in need. Or rather, a friend in need is a friend, in, you, however you put it. There's no good friends anymore. So my brothers and sisters, I stand right here to, to tell you, be careful too with friends. Because check it out. Chama, the man, all of them, it's all friends that put them into that nonsense. We take drug, we smoke, God punish the devil. Let me move forward. I just wanted to pause right here to talk. How little thing, useless stuff like that go viral. But the word of God stay inside the divine suggestions of Christ, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. And nobody want to press and share. God punish the devil in the pit of hell. God will help us. God will help us to push this ministry, to push this word of God, to push it to every corner. We're not going to be ashamed of the word of God from today. We're going to keep on clicking keep on clicking put it on our, our 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 facebook story put it on our on our messengers put it and say this is the word of god raw from the bible the Israelites spent 39 39 years in the desert unnecessarily because they were terrified of the canaanites they underestimated god's ability what are you doing to underestimate god's ability in your life because of friends because of drugs, because of sex, because of rubbish, because of the athletes of this world. What are you doing? The Israelites' first attempt to enter the promised land had failed. Check Numbers 13, 14. Here Israel saw that the Israelites were, uh, here Israel saw that the Canaanites were terrified of their army. Like I said, there are so many things God will do for you. All the, the devil in the pit of hell. Even if they come from your mama when born you, you go to you go to terrorize. I beg you. Now faith now in the key person. If you believe, say when we born, you go kill, you go kill you. Now faith. Carry all your go go give this God. I, I'm telling you, I'm a living testimony. When I say this, I'm not saying it just to because I didn't read the Bible. Uh, listen, I read the Bible. I experience the Bible. I experience in this world. So if I seek to talk to you or teach, listen carefully because it's coming from a two side and three side. She read the word, Holy Spirit teach her the word. She experienced it and she go into the world and see what is happening. So I look at this word. That's why when I see people do me, 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 I say, oh my God, I start praying for them. Look at what is happening to the Israelites. The Israelites, the Israel, uh, you know, saw that these Canaanites were terrified of the, of the army. The Canaanites had heard about the Israelites' great victories through God, through their God. The Bible said, we, if we trust in the Lord, 
<laughs> he that trusts in the Lord. Come on, finish it. He that trusts in the Lord. Hey, he that waits on the Lord will mount like eagle. Oh, come on, Labo Selati. Let me keep on moving because the Holy Spirit is taking me over. Just say this part of the word of God. I, I just love the word of God. I can I can be here forever, but let's move on. When, when people hear what God does for you, if you shut your mouth, look, let's have a check. The Bible said the, the closed mouth will not eat. So I don't care. Open your mouth and tell the world what God has done for you. You might not go in detail so that they're not going to be jealous of you. But you go tell them, say, God is good though. If not be God, where I go there? If not be, like I tell somebody, I say, yesterday I said, God is so good though. If not be God, I would have been dead, forgotten, wouldn't even know where they bury me. Not the talk of say, I did life for, say, for waiting. But God, but God. That's why I preach that preaching, but God. Powerful preaching. I put, at a time in my life, as a little girl, I put everything in my, in my life. I carry a dog for a hand. He give me children, I carry a dog for a hand. That is why I don't call my children, my children. No, those are God's children. So if you leave this class today, call your children God's children. They're not your children, you're just a caretaker, my dear. Fathers and mothers, you are just a ketika. God just uh, take permission for you. Say, hey, please help me take care of the children. So don't be saying, my children, my children. Especially if they're acting like fools. Call them God's children. And leave them unto him who is able to do abundantly. Who is able to change them. Who is able to take them. Prodigal son, what did he do? He went and eat some, uh, some eat with some pigs. And he came back home. Prodigal son and daughters will come back home. So the, the kind I had about what is well as victory, and you can check that in 2, 9, 11, what victory they got through God. And they hope the Jordan River will slow the Israel down or discourage them from entering Canaan. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? How enemies will say, I'm going to deal with Reverend Joy, but uh, the only thing I'm going to use against her will be the river Judah, the, the Judah, the Jordan River. Uh, maybe the Jordan River of her life is her children, or her marriage, or her husband, or her wife, or her, or her job, or her ministry. That Jordan River, I want to touch that, that Jordan River so that uh, she will be delayed. That Jordan, who, who, what is your Jordan River, my brothers and sisters? What is it that the uh, devil wants to use to delay you because he knows that you are so conscious? of that they were scared of that and saying oh we know they're not going to cross the Jordan River but what did God there? but the news that the Israelites had crossed the Jordan River on a dry land caused any courage the Canaanites still had to melt away they were shaking like leaves they were shaking like a hand that you cut off his head don't underestimate God what did I say my brothers and sisters subtopic don't underestimate God Devil, listen to me. I serve you a notice today to everyone online. If you are messing with them, don't underestimate God of them, God of your former, God of my husband, God of everyone online. Do not underestimate the devil because for them to even turn in and do what God called them to do, you shall do nothing to them. Former, you will walk on the dry land in the name of Jesus. I don't care what is your river, Jordan, the, uh, the Jordan River. God will separate your Jordan River, my dear. God will separate your Jordan River, my husband, for doing what you guys do online and evangelizing this world. But the news of Israelites had crossed over and caused any of them, all these Canaanites, and uh, they melt away. So don't underestimate God. If we are faithful to God, he will cause great opposition to, dis to, to disappear. When you are faithful to God, everything that fear you, all your Jordan River, all your Red Sea, all your struggles, all your problems, all your fear, all your singleness, not getting married, all your children not acting right, the money in the bank is red, God will give, disappear all those ones without you knowing. God can change attitudes of those who oppose him remember that god does not care he can change any attitude the bible says he holds the, king, the, the heart of a king he can do whatever he want to do with it and he holds your heart he holds my heart the right of circumcision mark israel position as god's covenant people 
We are all God covenant people. I don't know about you, but let me talk for myself. I am a God covenant person. My family are God covenant person. Every the divine of Christ members, we are all God covenant people because I pray for you guys daily, every day. I put you on God covenant. I say, don't put them to shame. I want to see testimony about them. When God made the original covenant with Abraham, he required that each male be circumcised as signs of cutting off the old life and beginning a new life with God. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's read chapter 5, verse 2 through 3. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make fine knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made fine knives and circumcised the Israelites at the Gabonite Haratan. Other cultures at that time used circumcision as a sign of entering to adulthood, you know, how you have babies, there's a circumcision. But this one, God used, but only Israel used it as a sign of following God. God used circumcision at that time for showing that Israel's are mine. They follow him. A man will only be circumcised once. Again, here reference the fact that many of the young men were uncircumcised at this time. Because you know they were born in the wilderness. All their father and mother, the disobedient people were dead in their wilderness. And, 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 and so they were not circumcised and this was the place God circumcised them. Let's go to verse 8 and 9. Verse 8 and 9. And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in the camp until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of the Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilead to this day. And you know, so you know, when they circumcise, you have to stay to be healed. And they're located about two miles northeast of Jericho, Gilead was Israel based camp and their temporal center of government and worship during their invasion of Canaan. God knows how to hide his people. <laughs> I love the way God hides us when we are, when people are looking for us, the devil, all their group, the evil doers, the people that want to kill us so bad, God will hide us in his pavilion. Like he said, here the people renewed their commitment to God and covenant with him before attempting to conquer the new land. At Gagal, the angelic commander of the Lord's army encouragement appeared to Joshua with the further instruction for battle and encouragement for the quest. After uh, that, will you see that in 5, 13, 15. After places in Israel, it was that Israel king Saul was crowned. And you can check that in 1 Samuel 11, 14, 15. That's where first king was crowned because that's where they have their rest. That's where God hide them. No enemy could look for you when God hide you. When God hide you in this pavilion, they can be going around and around. You will be invisible with the Holy Spirit upon you being your comforter. On the evening of the 14th day of the month, on the month where I camped at Gagal, all the plans, all the all the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover, and that is where they celebrated the Passover. This joyous Passover was, was the first to be celebrated in the promised land, and only the third celebrated by Israel since the Exodus from Egypt. Say that again. <laughs> Joshua verse chapter 5, Joshua chapter 5, verse 10. This is where they get their first Passover. And this joyous Passover, my brothers and sisters, was the first to be celebrated in the promised land and only the third celebrated by, the, by Israel since the year settled from Egypt. The, the last time was at the foot of the Mount Sinai, if you remember, 39 years earlier. This celebration reminded Israel of God's mighty miracles that brought them out of the land of Egypt. There they had to eat in fear and haste. Here they eat in the celebration of God's blessings and promises. You can see that in Exodus 12 for a description of the night angel passed over the Israelites' home. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you serve the Lord, you have nothing to regret. You have nothing. What did I say? When you serve 
serve the Lord in the spirit and truth when you obey the Lord, when you faithfully serve him. I, you know, you, you, it's not like you're going to be perfect, but you're going to be doing what he tells you to do and follow a little bit. I tell you, you will never regret it. Let's go to chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. The day after Passover, that day, that day they ate some of the produce of the land on liver bread and roasted grain. 12. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. God had miraculously supplied manna to the hungry Israelites during their 40 years in the desert. Remember Exodus 16, 14 to 31. In the bountiful promise land they no longer needed this daily food supply because the land was ready for planting and harvesting hallelujah somebody god will give you put you in a place god will put you in a place where you don't need to plant or harvest because you already did it god had miraculously provide food for the israelites while they were in the desert here he provides food from the land himself Prayer is not an alternative. What did I say, my brothers and sisters? Prayer is not an alternative to preparation and faith. It's not a substitute for hard work. Some people say, oh, I'm praying. I have faith. Faith with no work is rubbish. It's dead. It's sickness. The same thing, prayer is not an alternative to preparation. Yes, you pray, but you must prepare. Like I tell people, do what you do. God does not fall down to do your job. For example, you say you don't have a job. Put on your resume. Start looking for a job. Going out. Don't sit down. I'm praying. And you're not doing what God, how are you going to get a job? Talk to people. Open your mouth. So prayer is not an alternative to preparation. And faith is not a substitute for hard work. God can and does provide miraculously for his people as needed. But he also expect them, expect us, expect you, expect everyone online to use their God-given talent and resources to provide for themselves. If your prayers have gone unanswered, my brother, check yourself, my sister, check yourself. Perhaps what you need is within your reach. Perhaps what you're praying for is already there. That's why I love the song. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. See what I, what I like. All I have needed, thy hands are provided. Yeah, yeah, Calabo sell it here. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Everything we needed, God has already given it to us. But we should use our God-given talent, resources, and ability to provide for ourselves. If your prayers have gone on answer, perhaps what you need is within your reach. Pray instead for the wisdom to see it and the energy and motivation to do it praise the lord somebody we are rolling come on prayer point god do not let fear affect my faith in your ability to deliver in my life in the name of jesus god in the name of jesus do not let fear affect my faith in your ability to deliver in my life to deliver in the life of everyone in the name of jesus god almighty god almighty do not let fear affect my faith in ability to deliver in the name of jesus too god help me to focus on you and to remember that you are guiding me in the name of jesus god help everyone online to focus on you to know that you are the one guiding all of us guiding our children god let all our children focus on you to know that you are the one guiding us we are in the second prayer point i'm going to repeat the first prayer point somebody can type it for me and this first prayer point is that god do not let fear affect my faith in your ability to deliver come on type it type it my brothers and sisters 
God, do not let fear affect my faith in your ability to deliver, deliver in my life. God can deliver you in anything that you're going through. God should not let the fear of unknown, the fear of what would I do, shaking to affect his deliver. Because when you fear and start, when you fear, fear will come and doubt will come and then you don't believe in God. So God, do not let fear affect my, my faith or everyone online faith in your ability. In the name of Jesus, Kalabo Baladi number two god help me and help everyone online help our children help our husband and wives help our family oh god to focus on you to remember that you are guiding us hallelujah somebody powerful prayers that's why i love the verses of christ nation church bible study with after all the raw word of god we Table it and support it with three prayer, powerful prayer. So two, God, help me to focus on you, to remember that you are guiding me. Help my children to focus on you, to remember that you are guiding them. Help my husband to focus on you, to remember that you are guiding him. Help everyone online to focus on you, to remember that you are guiding them. Help all the voices of Christ Nation Church to focus on you, to remember that you are guiding them. Makule bosala baladia, masi kekeke kabarigit. Yeah. Help me type those things. Uh, thank you so much. If oh my God bless you, my sister. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Let us pray. God, help me to focus on you. To remember, oh God, that you are guiding me. And the third one and the last one. And we are done. That's why I love the Vancias of Christ. Because we love family. So we do our stuff quickly. You go home and enjoy your family. God, help me to believe in you in whatever you do in my life. Uh, that's a very powerful prayer. If you're not sure of this prayer, you got to just think about it. You are saying that even God give you a last sorrow to come, you are fine with it. He allow you to not to get to a place you are looking for. You are fine with it. You've been praying a prayer he never answered. You're fine with it. You know why? Because you are saying, my life is into your hands. I was teaching, I said, uh, at a time, I said, God, I don't care what you do. I dump my life in your hands. And when you dump your life in God's hands, that's where you end your prayer, thy will be done. Amen, somebody. Come on, let's take that third prayer. God, help me to believe in you in whatever you do in my life. God, help everyone online, all members of the Vestures of Christ, non-members, the people are joining right now, to believe in you, the to, to believe in you in whatever you do in their life. God, help our children to believe in you in whatever you do in their life. God, help my husband to believe in you in whatever you do in his life. God help our family, our divine soldiers of Christ. Ma ku ke ke le ke data dia le ke le ke la ba la palitia. Ma li de bo sende le bo sindiye. Ma ku le bo sende la ta ta ta. God help me, help me, help me to believe in you in whatever you do in my life, because you are the owner of my life. You are the owner of my family. You are the owner of my destiny. You are the owner of my children, because those children are your children so you own them i'm just a caretaker so come on pray i don't know that mother you going through your children and acting like fools put them in this prayer say god help my children to believe in you in whatever you do in their life help the mommies to believe in you in whatever you do in their children's life masuke lebo saladia ma keke shakalabasindia ma lakalabo seletia after all said and done, I always repeat the prayers one more time. Prayer point number one. God, do not let fear affect my faith in your ability to deliver me. Prayer number two. God, help me to focus on you, to remember that you are guiding me. And the third one, God, help me to believe 
in you in whatever you do in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this prayer. My brothers and sisters, I thank God for he's a worthy God. He's a merciful God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding that you give to restrain the hostility forces and offer comfort in the place of conflict in our life, in everybody's life, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, in the life of everyone online, Satan, I rebuke you. In their children's life, I rebuke you. In their marriage life, I rebuke you. In their life of singleness, anyone single, Satan, I rebuke you. God will give them their life partner and their spouse. Satan, I rebuke you. And the Holy Ghost fire consume you by fire, by thunder, in Jesus Christ's name, the giver of peace name, amen. And I pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. My name is Reverend Dr. Joy Angwili the General Overseer and the Shepherd Leader of the Vanities of Christ, Nation Church, Maryland, USA. Thank you so very much, my brothers and sisters, for joining and listening to us. Join us on our life-changing programs where your destinies are being restored. Be a part of our powerful Bible study like today, every Tuesday, and the fire prayer, like the three prayer we just make every Tuesday at 10 a.m. U.S., 3 p.m. Nigeria, and 2 p.m. Europe. We are inviting you to our authentic talk every Friday where we touch hard topics. We just finished domestic violence, and we are now in six single parenting it's a lot of single parents and out there back in africa they just look at that as a as a oh my god she's single oh she have a baby by herself oh the husband or the wife god go punish the devil in the pit of hell these things happens single parents come from anywhere but that is for friday so join us on the 30 talk where we, we are digesting and that and you know the logging on that single parenting uh talk and uh, it will be friday 10 a.m 3 p.m you uh, 10 a.m us 3 p.m europe uh nigeria and 2 p.m europe you are also invited to our online service every day please all members of Divine Students of Christ make it a point of duty to be coming to church. It's online. You are home. It's 11 a.m. U.S., 4 p.m. Nigeria, and 2 p.m. Europe. Come on. Let us push this word of God. If things that of God that makes you tired, don't want to do it, that is where God wants you to do. That's what devil don't want you to do. Because God wants to bless you. So the more you do, you more your blessing. I hope to hear from you. I will be with you next week, the same time online. It is from us all, all over the world, at the Vanities of Christ, Nation Church, Maryland, USA. God bless you all, Almighty. Thank you. And who can be rich in our divine dash soldiers, that's Christ, that's nation, our website. On our YouTube, there's so many videos. Go take the one of them, run with it. And you can meet us on our WhatsApp. Thank you so very much. I will finish. I love you, but God loves you more, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for the today Bible study. I've learned a lot, and I pray that you learn a lot. God will open our ear to be the hearer and the doer of his word, and not just get out of here and don't remember. As we're going, we're not going out of God. The presence of God will go with us. The Holy Spirit will comfort us. And Jesus Christ will guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Bitch a hug. Bitch a hug. Bitch a hug. God bless you. Amen.